okay, we have a time certain in 28 minutes, which will be a lunch for a lunch break. And then we have another time certain. So let's, let's just move on to 7.1. We're privileged. This is our information budget uh, on information item. And it's, it's on our budget. Uh, we're privileged to hear from finance director, Deborah Jacobson and Dale Frost, our financial uh, analyst. So Director Jacobson, you're back up. Are you Thank you, Chair. Um, so just really quickly, we wanted to kind of give an overview um, budget-wise how the session kind of shook out, um, if you um, could say. Um, if we could turn the time over to Dale Frost, um, our fiscal policy analyst, and he will actually go a little bit deeper into detail um, on comparing the budgets and how they actually came out at the end of the day. Okay, Analyst Frost. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Director Jacobson. Uh, Jeff, can we bring up the first document, comparing budgets document? So uh, this should be somewhat familiar to you all at this point. Um, I, I've been uh, building this slowly for you since January as different budget recommendations from different entities comes out. Um, come out. Um, the latest version you saw had the Public Education Appropriations Subcommittee, PEA, and their recommendations. You'll see their three new columns or, or the notes column is updated. So the EAC final um, column, that is, these include the budget items that were um, approved by the Executive Appropriations Committee um, and or in final budget bills. So these are the, the actual appropriations that made it to the end of the line. It, um, I included bill references. So uh, if you see, so it says House Bill 2 and then comma, for example, on line six for early grades professional learning. If you go to items 11 and 15, that would be the actual legislative language related to this budget item. And um, you've already heard previously that um, we received uh, all of our, our number one request outside of the base budget request and most of our number two requests for OEK. Um, I, if you can scroll down a little bit, Jeff, I want you to see that um, with the exceptions of, of items four, six, and eight, uh, the legislature appropriated at least some funding for all of the top 10 priorities. And for four, six, and eight, the Public Ed Appropriations Subcommittee recommended that, that LEAs look at the federal funds that are coming in. Um, and uh, I mean, and the previous conversation is very salient to that. Um, I, and so I, I think this is a lot of good news. There were some um, requests that were ongoing from our standpoint that were one time. Um, let, you know, let me give you an example, and so you can kind of orient yourself to the chart, and then I um, can quickly go through the chart, but I'm not going to go line by line, and then I'd be happy to answer any questions. In the notes column, the final column to the right, if it says one time, for example, and doesn't have a specific organization, that means that all um, recommendations were, were one time. If it doesn't have any notes, that means those funds were for ongoing funds. Um, so for example, in line eight, uh, the board prioritized and recommended $12 million for the intensive services pilot program. And this was rolled into House Bill 421. Um, $1 million one time was eventually approved by the legislature. Uh, line 14 is another example, the small district base funding. Uh, we, uh, you as a board prioritized about 3.6 million ongoing. Um, the governor recommended 8 million ongoing and the legislature um, approved 3.6 million one time as bridge funding as we figure out how to address this issue on a more long-term basis. And so hopefully I can kind of give you a sense of the, the language I tried to use in the notes section. Uh, again, I'm trying to collapse a lot of information from multiple bills to, to give you what you need um, in, in as abbreviated form as I could. Uh, let's 
Uh, go up to the top, Jeff. It's on the bottom too, but I just want to um, highlight for you um, the totals. So the governor's budget, PEA and EAC, those columns were all based on balanced budgets. USBE doesn't have to go through the budget balancing process. So it's not a surprise that that amount is more, but you can kind of get a sense of what made into the final budget, which was $481 million or almost half a billion dollars. Most of that came in the base. Um, and so it really was uh, a very, successful year in advocating for funding. Um, and I would be happy to answer any other questions. The only other point I'd make as you scroll, maybe Jeff, if you can scroll slowly down through the list. In the EAC final column, those that are, those cells that are highlighted yellow, um, those simply mean that the final appropriation um, or the nature of the appropriation changed from the PEA recommendation. And sometimes they were minor changes, sometimes they were fairly major changes. And uh, with that, I would be happy to answer any specific questions about budget items in particular. Chair? Okay. Thank you, um, Alan Frost here. We're, I'm looking for hands. I, I really appreciate um, you and your staff with Deputy Superintendent Scott Jones giving us the updates to the legislation and then prior to this meeting. And, and again, here's our presentation too with these comparisons. So uh, any questions from board members? I'm not seeing any hands raised, so thank you. Thank you. Um, it's a good report. Um, Director Jacobson, do you have anything to add? Yeah, so um, just really quickly, um, we wanted to, for informational purposes, we wanted to highlight one specific bill. That was House Bill 402. Um, there were some current concerns around transportation. And so if we can recognize Director Patrick Lee um, to just give you some information on that particular bill. Okay, Director Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, hopefully you can hear me all right. I might have to, if not, I might have to turn off my camera so I can get closer to my microphone. Just let me know if there's any issues with hearing me. Um, but on, on this item in particular, there, there were issues that the board um, had uh, been presented uh, last year. And so with the board's recommendation, it was brought to the Public Education Appropriation Subcommittee. And in the committee, uh, it was uh, moved and passed by the committee to include uh, certain aspects of addressing both the to and from pupil transportation, as well as the, the rural uh, transportation reimbursement grant. Um, the, the, both of these motions were included in Rep Representative Johnson's bill to, uh, in effect, use fiscal year 19 data, both for to and from pupil transportation and for the Rural Transportation Reimbursement Grant. Uh, the, the main gist of the, the reason for that is because the data for FY20, of course, was all over the place. And so now that this bill is passed, we will be sure to utilize that FY19 data. And so it will, will keep things more consistent for the districts when it comes to the transportation issues um, for to and from pupil transportation. And where the reimbursement grant is concerned, it will ensure that, that those schools or the LEA, excuse me, which I believe is San Juan and Pinnacle Canyon Academy will both receive the funding that they normally would receive um, if, uh, if by using, excuse me, by using the FY19 data. Um, that's that's the, the basic gist of the information update. If there are any questions, um, I can try to answer those or we have state transportation specialist, Ron Litchfield here as well. I'm not seeing any, any hands raised that uh, I thought the bill was very well put together and, and definitely on the hill is very easily explained the, the need and, and the betterment there. So thank you. Yes, sir. Um, Director Jacobson, do you have anything else to add? No, uh, this time that would um, conclude 7.1. Okay, thank you. We have um, Deputy Superintendent Andrew Stallings on the legislation. I, I think we have time for 
15 minutes or so of, of updates. And, and then we can certainly come to this after our time certain items are, are there. So are you, are you ready to present? Yes, Chair, I'm ready. Okay. All right, thank you, um, board members. Good um, morning, no, afternoon. Uh, Angie Stallings, Deputy Superintendent of Policy, and um, Jeff N. Holton will also be joining me for this presentation. First, I'd just like to, to give you some background information of what to expect over the next month and uh, draw your attention to some materials that you might wanna use if you're asked by constituents or groups to provide a legislative summary of your own. And so um, the session, as you know, ended less than a week ago. Uh, what we will be doing over the next couple of weeks are two big things that you should be aware of. First, um, next Tuesday, as kind of our, the superintendency and other leaders in, in, at USB, we'll be compiling essentially our to-do list for the next year. Um, related to the session, which means we'll be going through each of the bills that we've been tracking and determine what rules might need to be written, what RFPs, reports, um, applications might need to be prepared, and how we're going to support our LEAs and their implementation as well of the bills from the 2021 session. And then in the next couple of weeks, likely in the next two weeks or so, but definitely before your April board meeting, we will have what's um, called our public education summary of the 2021 legislative session. Sometimes it's called the bill book. And that book um, is a summary of all the bills that we were tracking that relate to public education, as well as the funding that um, essentially Dale gave you kind of a preview and a highlight, but the bill book uh, or public education summary will include more detail on the fiscal side, as well as a summary of each of the bills, what will need to be done at USBE and what LEAs may want to consider doing at their level. So once we have that bill book ready to go, we will send that out to all of you as um, in, in an email, as well as we will send it out to LEA heads, our business administrators, et cetera. And often our LEA heads use that bill book summary as they um, work with their boards on kind of their portion of the to-do list from the legislature. So, and another um, document that we'll be showing in just a minute is called a, the 2021 session quick guide. It's uploaded in Civic Clerk. That is a document that in five pages is trying to give you just a snapshot of what happened this session. Again, it, it starts with the funding uh, what happened there and moves to notable bills and ends with your board positions. This might be a good document for you to use or to share with your constituents as you are um, briefing them on what happened this session. And if you have any questions about that quick guide or need support in that area, I know um, both Jeff and I would be happy to answer questions um, as well as um, uh, Deputy Superintendent Scott Jones and Del Frost. So let's start, Jeff, why don't you start by giving the board members a summary of the document 2021 general session status of statutory requests and board positions on bills. Great, thank you very much. Good to be here. Jeff Van Holten, Director of Public Affairs for the Utah State Board of Education. And I'd be remiss if I didn't give a special shout out to Dr. Jill Curry and Barbara Fuentes for the great work on all of these documents that you're going to see um, we get the privilege of sharing these documents and, and using them, but I wanted to make sure they got um, their due recognition for all the work they've been doing behind the scenes. Um, so very quickly, you'll see right here in these four circles kind of where we are at with all the requests that came to you this year um, for this last session. So there were 21 requests that you approved that we as staff could then go and seek a bill for those individual requests. So this is kind of what happened to those 21 requests. 14 of them were achieved, 12 in bills. So two of them were kind of merged into a, another bill. Uh, three of them did not pass. And then four of them we uh, discovered did not need a bill and we were able to handle it in a different way. So if you subtract that four out, um, you can see we did really well with only three of your requests not making it through. Um, and down here in the board position bubble, they also wanted to show you, you took a position of support on 16 bills, nine of them passed, seven did not. And a really great thing to highlight here for you is the three bills that you opposed 
all failed. We wanted to make sure that you were really aware of, of the great work and influence that you all have. Um, as you can see, your support, definitely the majority of those you supported passed, and then you also had all those that were opposed did not. Um, and then of course, if you want more detail in this document, you can kind of scroll through and see which of the bills were which and what ended up happening to all of those. But um, with that, I can pass it back to you, uh, Chair Hensley. Okay. Um, questions? from board members. I think the, the data speaks for itself. We appreciate all the, well, appreciate the shout outs too. It takes quite a team to track this and move those betterments and uh, forward and, and also consolidate it all into a pretty, a, a good, easy read report. So thank you. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Um, Director Van Holton. Did you have more you wanted to continue on this, or is it going back to, to Deputy Superintendent Stalin? We'll go back to Deputy, Deputy Superintendent Stalin. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks, Chair. Um, so now Jeff is um, showing you all the quick guide that I mentioned earlier. I won't go through the first two pages because I think Dale did a good summary, although I will just point your attention to the second page. We've um, kind of grouped some of the appropriations into categories. And so hopefully that will help um, you all as you're again, um, trying to identify what funding highlights there were and what categories they're in. So um, go ahead, Jeff. So what I will spend, Jeff and I will spend just the last, I would think maybe five minutes going through our, our just summaries of the notable education bills. Um, that passed this session. And we're happy to answer questions related to these bills or any other bills you have. Um, and, and I may be able to get through them. We may be able to get through them even in less than five minutes since you should be familiar with what most of these bills as we presented them or covered them during your Thursday legislative meetings. So first is SB 184, School Assessment and Accountability Amendments. You'll remember that this bill was one of our recommendations to the legislature based on recommendations from your APAC, the Assessment and Accountability Policy Advisory Committee. And that recommendation was to suspend um, for just uh, for this school year, the 2021 school year state school accountability requirements due to the suspension of assessments during the 2020 school year. And we were excited to see um, that that passed uh, fairly easily once it was finally numbered. Next is HB 381. You'll be familiar with the Grow Your Own Teacher and School Counselor Pipeline Program. This program will provide uh, funding to LEAs for them to award scholarships and to um, hire or to pay for um, paraprofessionals, school counselor assistants, and school counselor interns um, to move their way to becoming um, teachers and school counselors. Then um, SB, the two bills next that I'll be covering are the two statewide online education program bills at the bottom. Jeff, if you can scroll down to SB 234, this bill um, will open up or expand the statewide online education program to middle school courses for students in grades seven and eight. Um, it will open up uh, or be those courses will be available for our public uh, ed students um, beginning January 1 of 2022. And then for our home and private school students, that would be beginning fall of 22. Um, so they, they'd probably be able to begin enrollment in April for the following um, school year. And then SB 226, online education program revisions. This bill directs the State Board of Education to approve online providers directly to provide um, SOEP courses. And um, that currently only LEAs um, have the ability to be providers. This would allow providers to become approved directly through us and for us to provide funds directly to um, the providers instead of flowing those funds through an LEA. So uh, Jeff, I'll turn the time to you to go over a couple of bills and then back to me. Hang on one step before we move off of this. Deputy Superintendent Stallings, I believe, um, Board Member Lear has a question. Uh, I do. Chair, could I ask that directly to Superintendent Stallings, Assistant yes, Superintendent? Yes, please. Stallings? Please. Um, 
I had a question on 234 and 226, and maybe a request as you continue to go through these so efficiently and so succinctly. Um, I wondered if there were any significant changes to those two specifically, SB 234, 226, as they um, were finally passed. And then I, it would be helpful for me if it didn't take too much time, if you could know just any changes um, that happened at the last minute, if there were any on any of these bills. Does that, was that a clear enough question, comment? Yes, I'll be happy to, to um, share what I think um, you're asking, but if I don't feel free to uh, ask for clarification. So both SB 234 and SB 226 were numbered um, really without, you know, us receiving a draft or having an opportunity as staff to give kind of implementation advice or recommendations. Once the bills were numbered, you'll notice that both of them had either a first or a second substitute. And in a, in a lot of ways, that was really based on feedback from our office about implementation. So the original version of SB 234 would have required those middle school courses to begin to be delivered or offered beginning this fall, meaning the fall of the 2021 school year. Um, because we felt that we needed more time to kind of support our LEAs, make them aware of the changes, work with school counselors, as well as updating our systems, uh, the sponsor did agree to pushing back that those implementa implementation dates, as you can see, um, so that public school students can begin participating in, on January 1, and then homeschool and private school students the next year. The homeschool and private school students, um, the other reason why I believe the sponsor changed kind of that, that bill was because um, as we provide courses, to or allow middle uh, private and homeschool families and students to participate, there is uh, an appropriation that does trigger, trigger a fiscal impact. And so that $1.6 million to support their enrollment, um, you, you, you can see in the bill that that essentially has a year delay. So this first year, or the, the fiscal year 22, the only implementation costs are the, the costs for the support at USBE. Um, because as you know, um, the public school students are funded by taking funds from, from the one LEA where they are enrolled and providing that to the other LEA who is the provider. The second, uh, as for the SB 226, probably the most significant changes in those bills, and I don't know if I'd call them last minute, although I would say both of these bills were numbered quite late in the process, but I don't think either of them were amended uh, the last couple of days of the session. Both of the bills, I believe they were substituted when they were in their Senate committee. But SB 226, there were some issues about ensuring that um, the providers courses were NCAA eligible and requiring the State Board of Education to ensure that. We don't feel like we have the authority to do that. Only the NCAA you know, can set standards or ensure that courses um, are going to meet that. But instead, what we plan to do, and you can see this in the bill, is make sure that the, the standards we approve, we're going to ask those providers to demonstrate or provide some sort of letter or evidence that their courses are NCAA eligible. It doesn't say NCAA in the bill. It says like a nationally accredited athletic or activities association. I don't know, I apologize. I don't know what the wording was in the bill, but it essentially is a nod to NCAA. So those were the main changes from those two bills that I, I can recall right now. Again, I don't think they were done necessarily late as in the last couple of days, uh, but both bills did uh, were numbered somewhat late in the process. Brief follow-up, Chair. Yeah, we've got like three minutes and then we're okay, gonna- Okay, this will take about one and a half. Um, so Angie, the, I thought there was some concern about the about the cost for the uh, USBE to adequately um, review the providers um, that were outlined in 226. Was that cost funded? So um, you'll probably remember that one of the requests from staff back in November was um, a request for an FTE just to support the, on, the, the big growth that we've seen in the program. 
that and originally we were going to be looking at doing that through a bill but instead the legislature funded that FTE so and adding an FTE in the base budget so once SB 226 came out our staff determined that that the FTE amount funding that we're receiving in the base budget for the statewide online education program could could cover not only the growth in the program that we've seen, the tremendous growth in this program over the last five years or so, that we could use that FTE to also support the processes and um, needs of SB 226. But SB 234 did um, provide an, an additional FTE there as well. So we actually have two new people or two FTEs one that will be dedicated to support primarily the middle school implementation and support for LEAs, and then one FTE that came in the base budget that will support the full program, but um, specifically will be also be able to help support the middle, the home and private school students, as well as this new function in SB 226 of approving uh, providers directly. Thank you, Angie. That seems ambitious to me, but I trust you'll hire extremely efficient people, so thank you. Chair, uh, this is uh, Dale Frost. I could add to Deputy Stalling's point that might address Member Lear's concern. Well, you got less than a minute, so. I will give it 15 seconds. All right. So uh, there was a concern in the original Bill 226 about out-of-state teachers and out-of-state providers that were going to significantly increase IT and programmatic costs in a subsequent substitute bill that was taken out, which reduced a lot of the fiscal concerns for the bill. Okay, hey, thank you. Um, where we're at right now is we're almost at a time certain. So um, Deputy Superintendent Stallings and Director Van Holt, we're gonna go to pause on this. We'll come back after our time certain uh, to these items. I, Vice Chairs, I ask you to make sure I get it right when we come back, but I. I've got some really good notes we can pick up where we left off. At this time, board members, we are going and staff for taking our half hour uh, lunch break.